Mallory, no, just, just have the food hot on the table when I'm done with this. I don't have all night. Hi, I'm Mark. This is my finalized review of the Hyundai Veloster. So uh, strap yourself in. It's gonna be a really boring ride. Well, by now you're probably wondering why exactly this vehicle is in my garage sideways. Well, to put it nicely, it's just because it looks cooler and I don't have any other cars in here right now. So um, let's just say that it's here in this position to kind of go over just a little bit because by now, the time that you're watching this video, let's face it, probably you know everything there is to know about the car uh, because either one, you have one, or two, you're waiting to get one and you've basically seen every picture and video of the car online somewhere. Or if you are shopping for one and you're just learning about it, let's just put it this way. Uh, this car specifically is a manual transmission model, a 2012, and it has a style and a tech package, which means it has everything that they could possibly put on for this model here. So what you get is you get on the tech package specifically, you get these wheels. They're uh, like the concept wheels. They have the colored inserts to match the body color. Secondly, it has uh, a rear view camera in the back and rear view parking sensors. So let's say you're backing up and uh, you want to see where you're going and it alerts you if you're going to hit something. Basically, that's all it is. On the exterior, that's really the only difference between the tech and the style package. You can't tell them apart really aside from the wheels. And then the hatch opens up with the push of a button underneath. The rear mounted camera is also here. Okay, let me go over something here that an annoys me about this car. This guy, okay, I understand what it does. You lower the hatch and it hides your contents. It gives it a nice finished look, pretty refined looking. However, there are a few things that are bad about it. One is it restricts your cargo volume. If you fill this up, you go to close this, it doesn't close because this tray pops off. That's the first thing. The second thing is, is it's held on by these strings, which is very easy to remove, okay? So what happens when you close it is these weighted strings uh, flop around back here under lateral movement. So what happens is you take a turn flying around, not, not that bad, but you hear it and you think something's sliding around in the back. That's the second reason to remove it. Um, and the third reason is uh, to get access to the seats, you pull these switches up here. Now, if the hatch is up, you gotta kind of fight behind here to, to pull the levers on both sides of the seats to, to lower the seats down. This has a third door, it's great for one passenger, but however, there is a weakness here. That seat, after you put it down, how the hell do you put it back up? You can't reach it from over here, and there's no door on that side, so putting it back up is just kind of, I don't know, you have to go inside the car to do it. Is it a big deal? Yeah, not really, depends how lazy you are. Today I happen to want to complain about this shit, so it's a big deal. Overall, it's not that bad, but just a consideration. All right, so what we have here is uh, the overview of the front of the vehicle. All right, uh, you can see that it's a pretty attractive and bold looking front end, okay? It does have a big frontal area and it's not all that aerodynamic by a lot of standards, but it does look good. All right, let's have a gander under the hood. This is probably not gonna be very exciting, but the hood is steel, it's heavy. They should switch it to aluminum if they wanna cut some weight. Even if they can get it down to like 400 bucks more a car, I think it'd be worth it. Uh, the prop rod is here. Um, it's just basically a standard plastic covered engine bay for a four cylinder. There's nothing really too exciting to note. 
However, the airbox location is extremely excellent for changing a filter if you need to. The air intake tube is very short, pretty compact. Um, overall, the entire intake system is pretty well designed. The batteries at a very easy location to get at. Um, overall, very, very well laid out to work on. So if you like to do your own work, uh, oil changes are a snap. General maintenance stuff is a snap. Oil dipstick is here. I mean, it's just, it's really well laid out. So I'll give them, uh, I'll give them props on that. They did a good job. Okay, what I'm gonna show you now is this second door on the passenger side that the marketing has been hyping and talking about nonstop. So what you do is there's a handle here. It's not really a big surprise. It's a regular door here. Yeah, seen it before. And there's a handle here, it's so hidden. So you open it up and as long as the front seat is somewhat forward, it's very easy to get in and out of. You can see that there's plenty of legroom. Now this seat is up. Uh, if you move it all the way back, it's not gonna work, okay? Uh, it's a no-go. So there is plenty of room. There's plenty of room even with the seat up to the knees. Um, it, it's a comfortable fit. Moving over to the other side is extremely easy. I, um, I really have no complaints about this feature. All right, you can see back seat uh, space here. The seat's a little bit moved forward. Um, it's really not that bad. Uh, it's actually very comfortable. I have no problems with this back here, and I'm about 5'10". There's cup holders in the back. Um, it, it's just, it's not a bad spot to be in uh, with the back door as it is. Um, in terms of head space, you can see where my head is back here. Um, again, I'm 5'10". I can see where if you're if you're much um, much taller than that, it's going to be a serious problem for you. You're going to be hitting this glass, or at least hitting this headliner when you're getting in and out. So, um, you know, kind of be warned. All right. So, uh, last but not least, I'm going to take you on the inside of the Veloster, and this is really kind of the car's uh, strong point uh, that separates itself from a lot of its competitors in the class, especially for the price. Um, the interior on all the models is very similar. The style on the tech package, um, you can't tell the interior apart. Um, they're exactly the same and for roughly um, $19,000 of the manual trans, you have probably one of the nicer interiors for under $25,000. So I'll uh, open the door, you can take a peek here. Okay, I'm gonna hop in here. Uh, as you can see, the seat adjustments are here. There's uh, one for going back, you know, forward and back. And then this uh, handle actually adjusts the seat up and down. Now you can see they have, uh, it's basically two materials. They call this leatherette, which is just probably a glorified version of vinyl. It's, I, it, I don't think it's leather whatsoever. People think it's leather. Uh, that's pretty good that people think it's a quality material. It looks good. Um, I have no complaints about it. The center, center of the seating uh, surface is actually a fabric, a two-tone fabric. This is the black interior. The black interior has a gray and black center. And it looks good, feels good, and um, I like the cloth because in the winter uh, or in the summer, the temperature extremes, uh, basically this stops you from you know, freezing your ass off, and it also stops you from burning your ass in the in the summer. So I like the cloth. That's a big thing for me. All right. In terms of uh, interior comfort, um, it's good. Uh, the interior comfort, the seating position, uh, the bolsters are all about right. I mean, this is uh, it's sporty, not too firm, not too soft. They did a really good job, I think, overall. Steering wheel is uh, actually leather. It's leather wrapped. Um, all the controls for the head unit are on here, including your phone controls and all that. Gauge cluster is very nice, which I'll show you more in detail. Uh, you can see here, this is the uh, leather coated shift knob and it has a vinyl boot cover, which is very easily changeable and uh, it would make a nice addition. Uh, my problem with the, the shift knob is, is it's just, it looks great. Um, they did a nice job with the design here, but uh, the problem is, is it's too bulky. Okay, so like if you want to hold the knob like this, you're 
you're often pulling this ring up. And what this ring does is it's the reverse lockout. So you, you pull this up and move it over so you can go into reverse. So what I don't like about it is you're pretty much stuck holding it this way, which makes downshifting in a second like a, a claw type maneuver. And it really, uh, the shift action is very good, um, very smooth, um, very good. But this knob is just, I, I can't get into it. And that might be personal preference, but I think they should make it more round, more ergonomic, like uh, a lot of uh, more sports cars are. Uh, we have uh, aluminum pedals or metal surface pedals. Uh, you got a close-up of that. Uh, spacing is very good. Uh, your traction control button is here to turn it off. This is your passenger airbag button to let you know if there's somebody in the seat or not. It turns off automatically. Your HVAC controls. This is uh, how you turn on AC right here. Um, we got gypped and didn't get auto climate control in the US. It depends on who you are. It's not a huge deal for me, but uh, it is on the other country's cars. We have a manual adjustment. Uh, this is my only complaint about this center dash is these knobs feel very cheap. Um, everything else quality wise on the interior is very upscale. Everything feels really good to the touch except these knobs. So maybe they could make the metal. I don't know what kind of metal, preferably not something with lead, so I don't go and chew on them and die. But uh, something a little bit more sturdy. This, these red indicator markers look like it's like orange tape or orange paper. It just, it doesn't match up. So hopefully they can improve it. Uh, above here we have, um, you know, uh, lit mirrors with the switch there sliding and it does have extensions which kind of surprised me for this price range it's a nice feature up here is your uh, microphone for the uh, phone call the bluetooth function sunglass uh, holder here's your switch for your moonroof your panoramic moonroof or sunroof whatever the hell you want to call it uh, i switched these out they're led lights so they look different but th these are your lights same thing with your side mirror has a slide out uh, light here. And um, this is your blue link controls. This dial's blue link. This is point of interest and this is SOS. Uh, this mirror doesn't have a compass or anything else in it, which um, I don't use a compass. Okay, inside the armrest is pretty deep. It's a pretty deep well. There's a part of the tag package, you get a 150 watt AC outlet there. Um, they claim that you can plug your Xbox in but uh, they don't stipulate which one. You have to have the newest Xbox with the newest power supply, otherwise it's over 150 watts. And the PlayStation 3 supposedly does work, but you also need the newest, slimmest model because the old ones draw too much power. This is how you activate the actual AC adapters with this button. You turn it on and off, and that turns on the armrest uh, power plug. The graphics for the navigation are actually pretty good. Um, I think it's actually really good uh, compared to other systems. So you'll be pleased with the graphics. It does look good. It's very uh, pleasing to the eye. Um, you won't have any problems there. Next, it will play your audio files off a USB flash drive. This is a SanDisk 16 gig, um, and it has to be formatted FAT32, which a lot of them come formatted that way anyway. So all you have to do is drag and drop your files from your computer on here, your MP3s, Plug it in. As soon as you plug it in, the head unit's going to detect that there is a USB device plugged in and it should auto start playing your files. So then you can view a list and it shows you all the songs in that specific folder or you can go to specific folders and select it that way, select your song and it starts playing. That takes care of the interior review. There's a whole lot more detail that I cannot fit into the time allotted, but I will do a full review of the head unit and all the things that go into it. There's just so much detail that can't be covered here. But I appreciate you watching the interior and exterior part of this uh, review, and um, check out part two of the actual driving impressions.